guys, for today's video, I am filming a try on first impressions of the Sephora Favorites Fresh Face Refresh Kit. I haven't purchased the Sephora Favorites Kit in such a long time because usually I don't love everything in there and I want to love majority of the products to really make it worth the money, even though it is a great value. This was $45, but it has a value of 148, which is fantastic. And there's a really great variety of products in here. If you're someone that loves creams, I think you'll really like this. I'm not the biggest fan of cream products in general, but with the things that were included, I do think that I can get some good use out of them. And I think the shades are going to work for me. So I am going to be trying all of these products out today. And then I do have some other things that I will be using as well, just to create a full look. I'm just going to start by going over all the products. There are four full size products, which is pretty good. It comes in this little like see-through slightly blue tinted makeup bag so i will pull out the full size products so for the four full size products the first one is from iconic london this is their sheer bronze in the shade caramel glow i've heard this is very sheer so i'm hoping this will work for me and then the next full size product is the Benefit Roller Liner, which is their liquid liner in the shade brown. I'm actually not going to be using this today and I am going to try to sell this because earlier in the year I did use up a mini and I didn't love it because it bled on me. So I am going to try to get some juice out of the mini today so I can show it to you. But it's, I'm just bummed I'm like darn I wish this wasn't the full size product but I, I do think it could be very nice. It just didn't work for me. Then the other two are from Patrick Ta and that would be his clear shaping wax. And looks like this. I know it looks empty. It is not. It's like clear brow soap. And then also his double ended brush. I have a lot of double ended brushes or a lot of spoolie brushes. So for me, I didn't necessarily need another one, but I'm not going to, you know, use this for this product and then with something else that's going to make it all gunked up. So I am happy to have a brush specifically to use with this product. I'm so nervous to use this. I've never done something like that before. So those are the four full size items. And then for the other products, you have the Rare Beauty Always an Optimist Illuminating Primer Mini. The Tarte Breezy Cream Blush Mini in the shade Peach Sunset. That is so much cream blush. That is all that I need. So I'm really happy this was a mini. Then you have a travel size of the Charlotte Silvery Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. And this is 1.1 fluid ounces. So this is not a full size, but this is definitely a large size. So I was happy to see that. Same thing with this Anastasia Lash Brag Mascara. So I haven't tried it yet but I do have a little free sample that is smaller than this travel size and the last product is a little Ilia mini balmy gloss tinted lip oil in the shade Tahiti I have used up two other minis in different shades so I am excited to try this color and that'll be really easy for me to use up so those are all the products included I think there is a great variety here and I do apologize if my lighting is changing throughout this video I'm filming in the morning which I usually don't do because the lighting changes so much with the sun coming through the blind so I do apologize and when I'm doing the other products I'm probably going to cut that portion out but while we're here, I decided I wanted to do an eye look as well with a palette that I have not used yet that I did want to test this summer. And this was a limited edition holiday palette from Sigma. It's the Rendezvous palette. It has six shades in here, four shimmers, two mattes. It does remind me a lot of their ambiance palette, but the mattes in there are a little like more yellow tone, a little warmer. But I figure why not make an eye look with this today? So... I'm so nervous about that brow product and I've got some huge pimples right now so don't look at it so we're just gonna go ahead get started I'm going to apply some eye primer first a little urban decay primer potion and um, I do have a mirror down here just to make sure I blend everything correctly because my viewfinder is pretty far away well, at least for me Okay. 
then using the first product in the kit that would be the rare beauty illuminating primer and i haven't tried too much from the brand and you guys know i'm an oily skin person but i do have some glowy primers that i like like the becca backlight priming filter the vdl luma layer primer Ooh. This has a nice texture to it. It's not too thin or thick, not too greasy, but it's you know pretty easy to spread. Ooh, my face gets very red when I touch it. But that's a really pretty glow. Nice so far. And then I'm just going to apply my foundation. I am using the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Foundation Matte today. So I wanted to have more like a medium coverage look and not, nothing that's like too, too matte because I do want to put the cream products over top of this, not under this. So I'm just going to do a light layer all over to get some even coverage. Well, I'm just using a AOA sponge that's the beveled one, I think that's what it's called. It's the same shape as the Real Techniques. And for this it Cosmetics product, I have it in the shade Fair. I really like it. This was in my yearly favorites of last year. It's just like a great everyday foundation for me because I do like so much coverage. But this has like a really natural look as well. So I'm going to leave it like that. Then I'm going to apply some blemish concealer. I'm using Estee Lauder Double Wear in the shade One in Light Neutral. And I'm just going to leave it like that for a minute so it can start to dry before I blend it out. And then I'm actually not going to apply my under eye concealer yet. I'm going to do my cream bronzer first and then I'll go in and do it because I like doing the concealer afterwards in case I need to you know, kind of clean up the bronzer if it, you know, got onto too much of my face. So for uh, the bronzer, because it is a liquid, I like to apply it with a sponge and I will be using the original Beauty Blender for this. It's a yellow color, but it is the Blue Beauty Blender brand, which I just love the size of this for liquid cheek products. So Let's see. Oh, okay. A lot came out at once. There's what that looks like. I'm going to kind of smooth it out. Ooh, I really hope this is sheer because, okay, yeah, it looks sheer. I was like, whoa, that's dark. But then right here, you can see that's pretty sheer, but it is really warm tone. I am warm, but products can look orangey on me sometimes okay here we go oh okay I mean it definitely looks pretty warm I feel like it looks better in person than it is on camera right now but it's all right and try to blend into my hairline a little bit I still have a little bit on my hand, so I'll just add a little more to my cheeks. Great. And then I'm just going to go around the edges with the sponge I applied my foundation with. But that did blend really easily, which is nice. I actually like liquid bronzers better than cream bronzers because I find them easier to blend, but I prefer cream blushes over liquid blushes because I think they're easier for me to apply for some reason. So I like that. I think that looks really pretty. 
good i'm glad and you definitely like want to really like the full-size products that come in here for it to be the best value then i will do my under eye concealer using the nyx born to glow in the shade alabaster and then after i blend this out i'll blend out actually this can dry quickly so i will just tap it out with a brush and i'm mostly trying to just go around the edges to blend it I'm not trying to go on top of the actual pimple too much because I don't want to take away the coverage. So I know that there's a little bit more coverage on my chin versus the rest of my face, but it'll be fine once I put the rest of my makeup on. So yeah, back to this Born to Glow concealer. Going to highlight a little bit. Yes, I still do this with my concealer even though it's not what we we're supposed to do. I am always like way behind on trends and like coming to terms with times of change in, but it still works for me, so I'm gonna do it. Um, this has like a nice light medium coverage with a glowy finish, which is really pretty. So I thought it would go nicely with these other products. Okay, so now I'm moving on to my cream blush, which is the Tarte Breezy in the shade Peach Sunset. I'm going to apply it with my Real Techniques buffing brush, which is my favorite for blush, for cream blush, I should say. And got about that much on the brush. I don't wanna go crazy because I'm not sure how pigmented this is or how easily it blends. Oh, okay. Ooh, okay. Looking a little crazy on me. And not blending the easiest. My face feels kind of sticky under it, which duh, I haven't set anything. Um, Feeling a little crazy here. Yeah. Okay. Looking and feeling crazy. So I, again, I'm going to go over the edges with my sponge to help it blend a little better. Now I can set my whole face. I'm just going to use the Durham Blend Translucent Loose Setting Powder so it's not going to give any color or coverage and it's really not even gonna mattify me. It's just gonna make sure my skin is not like sticky anymore. Pat my concealer again, pat out any creases. Then I'm taking the Dose of Colors sponge, which I did not like for foundation, but I've been using this for powder to get some use out of it and it's working really well for that. Is it unnecessary? Yes, but I'm happy to find a use for the sponge instead of tossing it. And it has longer life to it when I'm just using this for powder. And I usually use a lot of powder because I want my, you know, powder cheek products to go over top nicely, but I'm not gonna go too crazy because I'm not using any additional cheek products today. I'm just using these. And I don't actually layer liquid and powder that often because I am so fear like I feel like it can look really crazy. Usually I just do one or the other, um, but if I am applying like a cream product under my foundation, then sometimes I will put, I'll set the face so it's not sticky anymore, and then I'll go on top with a powder bronzer. And it's not too intense that way, so just depends. There's no highlighter here, so I'm not gonna add a highlight. And then the last step is the Charlotte Silvery Setting Spray. I feel very fancy having this. I don't want my shirt to get all wet. So let's see about the mist. Very nice. Okay. Mmm. This has a really nice light scent to it. Almost a little floral, but not too intense because I don't like a lot of scented products, especially floral or especially rose. But this is very light. Sprayed nicely, evenly. 
So this is what the complexion looks like. So now I'm gonna give my camera a second to cool down and then I'm going to zoom you all in for brows and eyes. All right, y'all, I zoomed you in for the eyes. I'm so nervous about the brows. So I did watch a tutorial from Patrick Ta on like the Ipsy page YouTube channel and he explained how to use it. So I'm going to do what he says. I'm so nervous about this. I've tried fluffy brows, not with soap brows and I just don't like it on me, but we'll try it today. So I'm gonna use the clear one that's in the set. And then after I do this, I will go in with my brow pens on fill-in. I feel like that's what I've seen is like the best because if you do it before, then it's gonna wipe some of the product away. And it'd probably be better to do this with a brow pen, but I don't have one, so we'll see. And I am wasting this very expensive setting spray right now, but I don't have any other one close to me. So he says to wet the product. Then you're taking your spoolie and running back and forth so weird running back and forth to activate the product so i'm literally going back and forth like this i have no idea if this is too much not enough and oh my gosh i'm so nervous okay here we go y'all so i'm just combing my brow hair straight up It is working pretty well for me and my brow hair is actually staying in place very well so I don't think it'll be a huge issue. And then I said to use the other side of the brush to push it against your skin for the laminated look. Um, that's crazy. I don't love that but you know we're committing here. We are committing here to the look. Ugh. Also, my brows need a trim. Maybe if they were, uh, I think I need a little more. Maybe if they were trimmed, this one looks so crazy. Okay. All right. We're just going up with my brow hairs, which is pretty easy. Okay, so this is what it would look like if I just brush the brow hairs up, but don't like laminate it to my face. I guess there's not a huge difference. Did this fall already? All right, we're just going for it, so. I'm not pressing that hard, but it's holding well. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. So now I'm just taking my current brow pencil, which is the Hourglass Arch Brow Micro Sculpting Pencil in Warm Blonde. And I'm just going to fill in a little bit. I'll do one. Well, I have to do one at a time, obviously. But so we can see the difference. Gosh, some of these hairs need a trim though. They're like really long and crazy. So I might brush them back down. Uh, okay. I just told you I was gonna show you and I forgot to did a couple strokes here, but this is what it looks like a little bit more filled in. This is just with the product. So luckily I think my brows have a good shape to them. So the most of the difference is really like in the tail where I'm filling in product. I do need to add some product to the front here where I have a lot of brow hairs missing. I'm just gonna do a little bit. I don't know. This feels crazy. Again, it's a first impression. Doing my best. So this this part where these hairs are really long, I'm just going to uh, brush it back down. Yeah, yeah, that's better. Okay, 
Brow's done. It feels like I have a little bit of brow glue on. It's fine, it's not as gross as I thought it was going to feel. Then going in with the Sigma Rendezvous palette. So I'm just gonna go in with the lightest shimmer sheet on my lid. It's this color Moonshine. And I'm going to apply it with the Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH41 brush. This is my favorite lid brush. I think Jaclyn did such a great job with these brushes. And I'm just gonna go in a couple times to make sure that I've completely set the cream shadow, but ow, that's so pretty. And it's showing up a little bit more rose gold than I thought. I thought it'd be a little bit more of like a rosy champagne, but I'm not mad at it. I love rose gold eyeshadow. So next I'm taking the lighter matte called Trist and I'm going to apply that all over as my transition and crease color. So because I think that one might be a little bit pigmented, I'm going to use the Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH34. And I'm just taking that up. So that can be like a crease and transition color. And then I'll probably go back in with another brush that's a little bit more dense to pack it on for the crease. I love Sigma Shadows. I just saw on Instagram some sneak peeks that they're gonna come out with a Cinderella collection, which of course has a brush set, an eyeshadow palette, a cheek palette, like a highlight and a blush, and then two lip colors. I definitely need to see better picture of the eyeshadow palette, but I'm definitely interested in the face palette and probably the eye palette too. I feel like Sigma does a perfect job of releasing products at like the perfect times. They wait like month, two months maybe, but they release different type of products, not always eye palettes. And I think that they have like, their system is down perfect. And they have sales all the time, which encourages people to buy. Works for me, I tell you that. Because I always get their products like 35, 40% off, which is great. Okay, so I just took that same shade and then the crease brush I used was the Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH35. Sorry, all my eye brushes are dirty. Then I am going to take the dark matte called Bootleg in my outer corner with this MAC 286 Duo Fiber Tapered Blending Brush. Ooh, look how rich that is. And again, I applied this with a tapered brush. So I'm gonna go back with the JH34 to blend that into my crease a little bit and as y'all can see I'm being a little quick and sloppy so forgive me if it's not perfectly blended I'm taking the JH36 from Morphe with no product on it to just buff around the edges so I almost forgot to re-intensify my lid shade with my finger so again going in with the moonshine shade oh so pretty and look what a difference it makes. It just really amps up the shimmer, gives more color. And I, again, do this with all of my looks. Okay, great. So now on to liner. Again, a full size does come in the kit, but because I don't like it, I'm going to try to sell it and I'm just going to hope there's enough juice in my mini for this video. This is the mini benefit roller liner and the brown shade it is a felt tip liquid liner. I actually really like the application of this. It just runs really badly on my really like runny eyes and makes a mess. So that's why I don't like it, but application is great. So forgive me if this looks a mess. It is a little hard for me to do this on camera. Okay, enough juice there. Mm 
And a lot of times liquid liner kind of like revives itself sometimes. Sorry if my mirror was in the way, any of that. Let's do it because I want to show you how this works. They do like basically always apply a wing. And again, mine, I'm gonna kind of like mush it around in the lid here to revive it, get some more product at the tip. And I have a hard time making my wings even, so forgive that as well. It's like way back in the day, I used to do liquid liner every day and then I stopped doing it all together and I do it occasionally. Oh, wow. Yeah, these wings are like, but that's okay. I attempted. It is easy to do if you've got some skills and I just don't. So on my lower lash line, I'm using Maybelline Lasting Drama Liner in Striking Copper. This is in my project pan. So I thought, let me get another use out of this. Then for my mascara, this is the Anastasia Lash Brag. And it does have an hourglass shape to it, which I like a lot of brands do that but it works for me. So I'm going to put some on the back of my lashes. Sorry if you can hear my son. You know, he's being a baby, he's crying. Not, not like he's the baby, he's an actual baby. I'm not saying that in a, in a mean way, which I shouldn't have to clarify, but you know, you know how the internet is. That looks nice. So no mascara, mascara. That looks so nice. Okay. Other side. And this is like not too dry, but I would say this seems like it's a little bit more on the dry side than on the wet side, which is fine with me. I don't, I don't really like mine either way. Normally I like a wet mascara just because I feel like it lasts longer. If something starts out dry, I feel like it does just dry up quickly. But if you are someone that throws out your mascara every like two or three months or three, four months, you should be fine. I don't know if I was gonna really like this or not. I've never really paid attention to what the brush looks like before. I really like that. Ooh, very pretty. Good. All right, and the last thing here is the Ilia Balmy Gloss in the shade Tahiti, which looks like a really pretty coral color. Ooh. I really like the formula of these. They feel super smooth on the lips. They're not very drying. The only issue is that these last on your lips for like 20 minutes max more like 10 15 and then they're gone and they're very expensive so it's annoying to me but i've mentioned before when i used up those other minis if that formula was from the drugstore i would buy it because i like the way that it feels but you know it's just not long lasting enough but i love this color i think it's so pretty i think i actually like this color the best out of the three that i've tried which the other ones would be only you which is like a light pink and linger which is a little bit more of like a mobby color. Alright y'all, so this is the final look using all of the products in this fresh face kit as well as a bunch of other things to create a full look. I'm very happy with everything. I feel like I look a little bit funny because I don't have as much brow product on as normal and I'm very happy with everything. The only two things I wouldn't even say I dislike, I think I just need to play around with more would of course be the Patrick Ta Brow Wax. I definitely do want to trim my brows and then try again and probably watch some more videos, play around with it a little bit more, but I'm not disappointed in it. It's definitely something different for me, something I don't already have. And then for the Tarte Cream Blush, I don't feel like it blended as easily as I was wanting it to, but I think it looks great now. Again, I did go over the edges with my beauty sponge that had foundation on it, and I went and set my face with a powder. It was translucent, but I think it 
it helps. So I think it all came together, but this is a really great favorites kit. If this comes back in stock, I'm not sure if it is right now. I know it sold out a couple times. If it comes back in stock, if you see it in your store, I definitely do recommend it. Like these two products are minis, but they come with so much. They're such a great value. I really like everything here. So I'm super happy with this kit. I would love to hear your thoughts if you've tried it or if there are any other kits that are out right now that you really like, let me know as well. And I wanna thank you all so much for watching this video. I know it was a little long and chatty, but hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.